So I've had Tesla solar panels for almost a year now, and they started working off really good. But as we get to the winter months, my production has decreased significantly to the point where I questioned if my solar panels were even functional. But the thing is, the truth is that as the sun gets lower in the sky and as the days get shorter, you just get less solar production naturally. But I had one factor that was really coming into play. I have a lot of trees that are right by my solar panels and as the sun gets lower in the sky, the shadows that are being cast by the trees are going farther to the point where they're basically covering my house for the majority of the day. Here's my nice house, here's my trees. Just pretend this one tree represents like all the 12 trees. During the summertime, the sun is typically, is way up, it's like high in the sky. I'm not sure why I did that. But the sun is up here. It is casting like not that big of a shadow on the trees. So the sun being up here, the tree shadow could be like this. You know? Whoa. Ooh, that looks. How do I finish this? <laughs> so that's what the tree shadow looks like. As you can see, it's not affecting my solar panels. Or if it is, let's just pretend like, I don't know, it's not affecting it that much. During the winter time, the sun is lower in the sky. So it's going to be like, I don't know, down here. I'm not sure why it's in the tree, but you know, whatever. So with it being lower in the sky, it's going to put a longer shadow. So like the tree shadow could be like super long like and it could just <laughs> cover up the whole house so like if my solar panels are here or here or here it's gonna make an issue it's gonna cover up my whole house and this is the problem i've had the sun is lower it's creating longer shadows for longer during the day so that's why i need to cut down these trees with no trees my house can now be without shade now i'm also erasing my house that's because i don't know what i'm doing so the question is is cutting down trees worth it for the sake of solar production and spoiler alert i did get about six thousand dollars worth of trees removed from my side lot so i would hope that you guys can support me with a like on this video every like helps this video get more views and more traction on youtube and we're gonna kind of tackle this from two points of view. One, of course, will be the monetary standpoint. Does the price of tree removal make sense versus the amount of money you're going to save? And then the environmental standpoint, if you're taking so many trees away, will your increased production actually result in less CO2 in the atmosphere? So we're gonna talk about both of those. Now, if you're watching this video, I can assume that you're either thinking about getting solar panels or you have them already. So if you have solar right now and you're considering cutting some trees down to improve production, the first suggestion I would make is wait. If you haven't had your solar panels for almost a full year, you can't really judge what your full production would be. Everyone's gonna be a little bit different. It just depends on the direction of your house, the location of your house, the shade, stuff like that. So just waiting a full year will kind of give you a full indication about what's going on. Like for me, my summer production is perfectly fine. My winter production, I expect it to be lower, but it's a lot lower. So basically, spoiler alert, I ended up cutting some trees down and that's what prompted me to make this video. So if you're thinking about getting solar panels and you're concerned about the production of your solar panels due to trees or shading, there's a few things you can do. So the most basic one, you can literally just go outside. So go outside several times throughout the day and just observe if there's shade on your roof, likely that's gonna cause some issues with solar panel production. Now you can have some shade on your roof and be perfectly fine. You don't want a full shade like the whole day. That's where it's really not gonna be worth it. And there's also some websites I've used in the past as well, where you plug in your address you plug in the time of the year that you want to calculate and you can see 
where the sun rises, where the sun sets, and kind of get, get a good picture about where the sun's gonna be. So you can kind of guesstimate where some trouble trees may lie in your specific property. So the third thing you can do is just leave it to the pros. I assume any type of reputable solar panel company should be able to guide you. They should be able to tell you what type of solar panel production to expect. They should be able to tell you what type of issues you may run into. Typically they can just use satellite information, look at your house, look at the trees around you and probably get a pretty good idea based just on that. Okay, so like I said, I went the route of cutting down trees. I basically cleared out a whole side lot. I cut down about 12 really big pine trees. So let's talk about the monetary aspect of that first. The price to cut down the trees was almost $6,000. Now keep in mind, they're very big pine trees. I wanted a reputable company to do it. I wanted a company that was insured. I wanted a company that was not going to drop a tree on my house or my solar panels or damage the power lines. If these trees were in the middle of the woods, I would not hesitate to try to cut them down myself, but they're by my house, they're by power lines, they could do some damage if the person handling the job did not know what they were doing. So I wanted to pay a reputable company. Paying a reputable company costs money. So like I said, about $6,000 to do that. Now to calculate the payoff, is it worth it? So first thing we need to do is go into my electric bill to see exactly what we're working with. So let's go all the way back to when I first got the solar panels installed. So my April 1st bill was $142. That was basically all normal electricity from the grid. My May 1st bill was $46.22. That was when I had solar, but we still had some electric usage a few days prior in the bill. Now my very first solar complete bill was $9.55. Now that is like, that's pretty much the base charge. So it costs about $10 to be connected to the grid anyway. So if it's about $10, you can pretty much think of it that my house used the same amount of electricity that it produced. Now, as we get farther into the summertime, my bill goes up a little bit, $25, $37, $44, $45, $50, $60, $70, $80, $90, $100, $120, $130, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140, $140,
So let me show you my normal production for 2020. So in May, I had a really good month of almost 1500 kilowatt hours of electricity produced, even in July, 1400, but then it started going down and like November was bad. Like 576, December, 554, we're like nearly at a three times decrease. Now it's expected to go down in the winter time, but not that much, like come on. So I'm gonna show you all of January just for the heck of it, so you can get an idea of what my production was. Keep in mind on good days during the summertime, I was getting at about 50 to 60 kilowatt hours of production. And here in January, you can see I'm getting 18, 16, 7, 17, 18, 19, 18, 20, 17, 22, 21, 7. Keep in mind if it's closer to 20, it's like a sunny day. If it's less than 10, it was probably a very cloudy, rainy day. And then here, January 13th, this was the day I had the trees cut down on my side property that will forever change my solar production life. <laughs> so the next day, immediately, 33.6 kilowatt hours. So like you saw before, I was getting 20. Now I'm getting over 30. That's like a 50% increase in production. The next day, 37. Like I have not seen this type of energy production since like October. It's amazing. 32. 14 was a cloudy day. 31 is like we're at 31 kilowatt hours today already and it's 216. We still have several hours of sunlight out there. And if you look right now, like we're getting 4.6 kilowatts of energy, 3.2 is going to the grid. But the best part is that I'm seeing like peaks of like 7.8 kilowatts, for example. I was only seeing like four and a a common theme I would see is that I would actually see peak energy creation in the morning. Like around 9.30, I would hit about four kilowatts of energy and it would actually go down throughout the day. Now the reason for this is that the sun rises in front of my house and I have solar panels on the front of my house that get all of that energy. But as the sun progresses through the sky during the day, it starts going behind all those trees and it gets to the point where those trees shade the solar panels on the side of my house and then also in the front. So I have like basically no solar panels getting any type of direct sunlight after a certain period. So let's also keep in mind that a Tesla Powerwall, one of them holds 13.5 kilowatt hours of energy. So we could safely say going from like 20 to 30 ish, I'm getting about an extra power wall of energy per day. Now, besides the savings, besides the, the extra energy I can now sell back to the grid, we're now looking at a better grid independence. If the power ever goes off in this house, I'm now producing the equivalent of one extra power wall of energy per day, which means that without the trees removed, to have the same type of backup reserve of power, I'd have to spend about $7,000 on a power wall. So if we're comparing that, the amount of energy that can be stored in a power wall versus the amount of energy my system is creating from this tree removal, like it's about equal. Not to mention, say if my grid power was out for days, we're now like every day the grid is without power, I'm creating another power wall worth of energy. So say if the grid was off for three days, I would need three extra power walls to make up for those three days of extra solar production. So that's pretty big, right? I think so. So there's a few other like non-monetary benefits as well for me. So just seeing the solar production increase by 50%, like that was big. Like money aside, just knowing that my system is working better means a lot to me. Also too, I cut down pine trees. So having less pine straw on my solar panels, um, also having less pine straw in my yard, in my gutters, like 
that's a big thing. Like that's very important to me. So I know you, you guys have already started making comments. You're saying that I got pine straw in my gutters on my roof. I need to clean it bad. Well, newsflash for you, buddy. I do clean it, but there's a lot of pine straw and it accumulates fast. But I'm going to clean them out again while this video is uploading. Hopefully you guys can sleep well knowing my gutters and my roof is clean. Now, I don't know how I'm gonna get on the roof because that scares me, but I'll figure that out later. So let's talk about the environmental standpoint as well. So I definitely know a lot of people would be very quick to judge me. Oh, Jeremy, you cut down trees for the sake of solar panels. That's not very green. Why would you kill trees for the sake of solar panel production? That's very ironic. <laughs> but I want to go over the math. It makes sense. Like you wouldn't expect it to, but it makes sense. So the first thing I want to point out is that the city I'm in actually requires a permit to get any trees removed. They want to ensure that every lot has adequate canopy coverage. So every lot in my city requires 3,500 square feet of canopy coverage. For me, I have two lots, so we need 7,000 square feet of canopy coverage. One pine tree is equal to 1,000 square foot of canopy coverage. So let's just say we need seven pine trees. On the other side of my property, we have about 20 pine trees. So we're already like 2X the canopy coverage, not even counting all the other random trees we have in our yard. So the first thing to point out is that my yard itself has a lot of trees to begin with. So I basically had the wiggle room to remove some anyway from that standpoint. But to really dive into like the math of it. So basically I did some math and I'll link it in the description below and also leave my source. But when you do all the boring math, it comes out to my system being the equivalent of 219 trees. And also keep in mind, that's not even a full year of production. I got my system in about April of 2020 so we have not even seen a full year of production. So where it stands last year, my system produced the equivalent of 219 trees. So me removing like 12 trees isn't a big deal at all. So basically all the boring math done, cutting down the 12 trees, if it results in 10 kilowatt hours of energy produced extra per day, that is the equivalent of 70 seven trees of CO2 removing power. So removing the 12 trees from a CO2 global warming slash environmentally friendly standpoint, it was perfectly sound. Nobody can come for me. <laughs> that being said, I do understand the importance of trees in our environment. So I felt obligated to make a donation to Team Trees. I donated $100 to Team Trees, which will result in 100 new trees planted. So hopefully my 12 trees killed will not be taken in vain. And in their memory, a hundred more can be planted somewhere else in the world that does not mess with my solar production. <laughs> if you're interested in donating to Team Trees as well, I'll link in the description below. So basically what I really wanna see is I wanna compare solar panel production in the upcoming year. It, we just started 2021. I just got these trees removed. I really want to compare it to my production of 2020. That's what's going to be really interesting. Compare month after month after month. See what my year looks like compared to last year. But of course, all of that information is going to take time. It's only January. We have several months to go for me to get any real world data with that. That being said, I'll definitely make an update video to this when I feel the time is right. So make sure you're subscribed to my channel for that. Please don't forget to like the video, subscribe. I'll put my link below to Tesla. If you're thinking about getting a solar setup yourself, there's a link below for you to use. It benefits both of us out. And if you're not bored of me yet, I'll put two more of my videos for you to watch right there. 
my head's gonna go right there for you to subscribe. Have a great day. See you later. Bye.